and a warm welcome to round three of the NGK F1 Powerboat Championship, which this weekend comes from Bay City, Michigan, for the Real Flavors Rocking the River event on the Saginaw River. Now, last time out, just two weeks ago, we were in Toledo, Ohio, where Ashton Rinker's reign continued with yet another win. Here we go, we're underway, and look at the jump, the 70 Green Buddha, Jude Gaspard gets, oh, they go deck to deck. The eight of Jeremiah, get out of my way, Mayo. The 24 of Spencer Love, side by side. They're all gonna go down the back straightaway through the commitment buoys. The 15 of Kraft gets washed down, and look at those Formula One boats, 115, 120 miles an hour, and look at, no surprise, wide to the outside is the Golden Boy coming last off the dock, taking a face full of wash as he goes deck to deck down the front straightaway as we start lap one of 15 here in Heat 3, qualifying Group A on the Saginaw. The 24 of Love's got that inside line. He's going to hug it tight to the inside. And the 20 of Rinker, nobody's got a match for that top end speed in that Rinker Boat World Kenneth Formula 1. He comes screaming wide to the outside. And just like he did yesterday, just like he did in Toledo, just like he did in Houston in round one, he lays everybody in his dust on the way to potentially his third straight pole position here in 2019. Then you see in third position there, he'll be coming out of the corner now. That's that blaze orange and white crystal clear wiper blades, number 94 of Rusty Wyatt. And then in fourth, the number two of race in Tracy Hawkins. You know, Ashton Rinker, part of three generations of Rinkers here racing on the Formula One Powerboat Championships, as you've got the 52 of Scary Jerry Rinker uh, in the tri -holes class, as well as the Number 10 of Tanner Rinker, and then sandwiched in the middle there in that second generation is the number 20 of Ashton Rinker. So three generations of Rinker racing here on the shores of the Saginaw present in 2019. There you saw the 24 of Love starting to open up a little bit of a lead between him and the third place boat, the number 94 of Rusty Wyatt. What a beautiful shot there, the crystal clear wiper blades, 94, sweeping it wide out of turn number four, trying to keep those RPMs up. He knows that he's got to find that top speed if he's going to close the gap over the number 24 of Spencer Love as they slug it out for second and third. The 20 of Rinker starting to walk away early. Here in the opening few laps of this Formula One main event, we can see the number 20 of Rinker, followed by the 24 of Love, then it's the 94 of Wyatt. We are five laps in to qualifying Group A, heat number three. Then in fifth position, the number two of Hawkins. In sixth, the number eight of Mayo. Then it's the number 35 of Clopadlo, followed by the 21 of Mandana, the 70 of Gaspard, and rounding out the field here, the 15 of Tim Kraft. Mayo pushing hard there. He's saying, hey boys, get out of my way. I may be a rookie, but I came here to dance. Pushing hard against the number two of Grace and Tracy Hawkins. There's the 15 of Kraft, was able to get by the 70 of Jude Gaspard, the Green Buddha sponsored entry here in his rookie season in 2019. Jude, a longtime crew chief and crew member for Race and Tracy Hawkins, has chose to step into the boat here in 2019 and doing a quite a formidable job for a young rookie in his first season in Formula One. Look at the 20 of Rinkers, got it dancing on top of the rough and tumble waters of the Saginaw River. Here for Rock the River 2019, presented by Real Flavors, downtown Bay City, Michigan, for the 31st time, running on the shores of the Saginaw. Now, I had a chance to talk with Ashton earlier today, and uh, he seems very comfortable, very relaxed, and, and a relaxed driver is a dangerous driver on the water for all their competitors, and he's uh, putting the nail in the coffin to that top spot on the starting grid or pole position here for our main event later on this afternoon. Pushing hard, the 20 of Rinker. Bouncing and dancing down the front straightaway. That 2.5 liter Mercury outboard on the back of that 17 foot long Kniff design Formula One tunnel hull. Running that racing gear case, spinning that propeller at thousands of revolutions per minute. Pushing that Formula One to 115, 118, 120 plus miles an hour here on the Saginaw. As he sweeps it out of turn number four, puts it up on his tail, now he's got to deal with a couple of back markers. As we close in on double digit laps here in qualifying group A, heat number three, are there going to be enough laps for the 24 of Love and the 94 of Wyatt to track down the man who's way out in front? About a half a lap lead over the rest of the field as he pushes it hard down the back straightaway. 
The 24 of Love making his way down into the corner. Now here comes the 94 of Wyatt, just finally getting into turns one and two, while Rinker is set teeing himself up to sweep it down in through turns three and four. Boy, the 20 of Rinker is having a phenomenal 2019, really picking up right where he left off in 2018. He's your defending series champion. He hails out of Riverview, Florida. Uh, and the golden boy, as he affectionately calls himself, is, is really been golden. Uh, perfect in 2019 in the opening round he pushed hard and was able to get by the 62 of Chris Fairchild who, who you will see in group B qualifying uh, about three quarters of the way through the race ran that one all in the checkered flag went wire to wire in Toledo in round two just a couple of weeks ago and now he's looking to grab that top spot on the starting grid that pole position for our main event there's the 24 of love had a chance to talk with Spencer yesterday and you know, he feels that uh, he need needs to get up to par with the boat. He said this boat is just screaming fast. Uh, it loves the rough water, so he's definitely improving uh, his times here in that brand new Formula One hall uh, as he continues to get used to it. I think as the season goes along, you're going to continue to see the 24 of love push his way up. You know, he sits in fourth in points right now, only 90, only, only 90 points away from that overall top spot. So he's still within striking distance in 2019. That is if he can get a good solid finish here this afternoon, which he's trying to do his best to qualify as high as he can, because he knows that he's gonna need to grab, grab more points than this man right here, the 20 of Ashton Rinker, if he wants to be that 2019 NGK Formula One Powerboat Champion. See there the 20 of Rinker getting by the number 21 of Jose Mendonca Jr. had a rough uh, rough go of it here this weekend in the Dean Arbor Ford Nuthouse Yacht Club 21 Formula One. Uh, found out yesterday they were down two cylinders, so they ran there qualifying only on four cylinders yesterday. They thought they had gotten it fixed last night, but it looks like Gremlins popping back up for the Dean Arbor Ford sponsored 21 of Jose Mendonca Jr. Still the 20 of us uh, of Ashton Rinker out in front, followed by the 24 of Spencer Love. And then it looks like the 94 of Wyatt is gone. I don't know what happened to the 94 of Rusty Wyatt. Looks like he might have gone down somewhere on the race course. And that moves the number two of Race and Tracy Hawkins up in a third position here in qualifying group A, heat number three. That's got to be unfortunate for the young man out of Innisfil, Ontario, Canada. As he was pushing hard and do, running really well on the Saginaw here. You see there, there's a 35 of Mike Lepadlo. The Gaylord, Michigan natives got it dancing down the front straightaway. There's our title sponsored Real Flavors number two of Race and Tracy Hawkins, hailing out of Willis, Texas. Uh, they got three boats in their stable, and unfortunately, due to some damage, had to go back down to two here for Sunday as the number four, Wesley Cheatham, had to sit out due to some damage sustained to the other Formula One hall running for Tuttle Enterprises, Real Flavors, and Bayside Home Care. A big shout out to all of our great sponsors. Most importantly, NGK Spark Plugs and Oxygen Sensors. They are the ignition specialists. Remember, 85% of outboard motors, 100% of personal watercrafts, all running NGK power. For the reliable performance on the water, trust the brand OEMs, ask for by name, NGK. Well, he's got those NGK Spark Plugs in the back of that 2.5 liter Mercury firing at on all cylinders as he is screaming down the back straightaway, the 20 of Ashton Rinker. Bright yellow, Rinker Boat World on the side, looking to do what he did in the first two rounds, and that's grab that pole position. In Formula One tunnel boat racing, the pole position is of the utmost importance. You get the clean water. With clean water, you can run the optimal amount of power from that four blade propeller on the back of that 2.5 liter Mercury. Pushing hard here is the 20 of Rinker. Sweeps it through one and two. The 24 of Love, nowhere to be found as he's just now getting into turns one and two. We got the white flag, so 14 laps down. One lap remains here in group A, qualifying heat number three. Boy, he's got it dialed in so well. You know, one of the things he used to dial it in is uh, the starter that he gets from CDI Electronics, the recognized leader in marine electronic ignition components for over 30 years. Rinker pushing hard, walks it out of three and four, and he's gonna cross the start finish line with another checkered flag in hand, going, taking all three qualifying heats with a number one position. He will be your pole sitter in our main event later on this afternoon, but there's a lot of jockey in position 
for the rest of the field, like the 24 of Spencer Love, who came in second here in the final qualifying heat. Here we go. The Rob, the 40, 47 of Rob doesn't fire. Alchemy gets a late jump off the dock. Quindazi comes like a rocket. And there comes the 52 of Chris Rinker and the 62 of Fairchild wide to the outside. Nine Formula Ones here in half the class. Oh, look out, Makis. Mike Makis takes a wash down on the back straightaway and almost barrels in to the number nine of Johnny Fleming. But they go three wide. On the inside, it's the 52 Rinker Boat World of Chris Rinker. On his outside hip and dancing down the front straightaway, that's the Lottery.com, McCullough Racing 62 of Chris Fairchild. Man, he's got that thing screaming. That evolution hull built by Mike Farmer and the late great Lynn Simberger has really got it dialed in, but Rinker's got the short way around the course. Looks like 62 might have to drag race him down the back straightaway and get enough room to shut the door. Will he do it here on the opening lap as they go down the back straightaway? The 62 of Fairchild's got a clear half boat length lead. Will he shut the door? Yes, he will. The 52 of Rinker takes a face full of water. And there's the 93 of RJ West. The 93 of West running for R&R Ready Mix. Mr. Bowie Marine Products, Far West Corrosion and Composite Craft in third, trying to fight hard after a very unfortunate turn of events in round two, having to bow out after nine laps due to steering issues, unable to allow him to continue after finding himself on the podium in round one. He thought he was gonna be a real contender and he's gonna have to do well here this weekend if he wants to be a contender for that season points championship. But it's the 62 of Fairchild starting to open up quite the lead over the rest of the field. The 93 of West right in the back hip pocket of the 52 of Rinker as they go down into three and four. But look at that all carbon fiber Kevlar evolution built hull with the surgeon on the water behind the wheel. That McCullough Racing Lottery.com machine has been a force to be reckoned with all year long. The 62 of Fairchild coming into the round three of the NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships sits only 42 points behind our leader, the 20 of Ashton Rinker. All it takes is one race where he takes that checkered flag. Could it be Bay City? He has won here before. Fairchild knows how to win here. The 20 of Ashton Rinker has never won here on the shores of the Saginaw. A little bit of advantage to the 62 of Fairchild as he's really doing well and is opening up an, a sizable lead with that over the rest of the field here in qualifying Group B, heat number three. Lottery.com had a great sponsor from McCullough Racing. And an interesting tidbit, those of you out there are probably going, hey, where's the 03 of Dustin Terry? Well, Dustin lives in Thibodeau, Louisiana. For those of you who may be down in that part of the world or have been keeping an eye on the Weather Channel here over the last handful of days, Tropical Storm Barry wreaked havoc all over Louisiana, and Dustin got caught up in that. But a little birdie told me earlier on today, he hopped on the, the first flight out of New Orleans this morning. He's en route. He will be here to race in the final here this afternoon. Great that McCullough Racing was able to get their other driver, the 03 of Dustin Terry, out there. But look at this battle he got for second and third. The 52 of Rinker cannot seem to get rid of the pesky number 93 of RJ West as they go side by side battling down there into turns one and two for that second and third position here in qualifying Group B heat number three. But it has been all Chris Fairchild here as he came out early. Used the outside line to find that clean water and blast off like a rocket. And he's looking to go wire to wire here in qualifying Group B heat number three. The final qualifying heat here for round three. And this will complete our starting grid for the main event later on this, af this afternoon. As we look at how our field shakes out right now, of course, the 62 of Fairchild, as you see, they're out in front. And second is the 52 Rinker Boat World of Chris Rinker, followed by the number 93 of RJ West. Then it's the number 77 sitting in fourth of Mike Quindazzi, followed by the number nine of Johnny Fleming. The 85 of Mike Mack is somehow still in the race after almost barreling into the back of the nine of Fleming right off the start. He sits in sixth. Then it's the 99 Snap-on Tools Northern Concrete Pipe, number 99 of Travis Yates. Then it's the 191 of Jake Alkema. And uh, a lap down already is the 47 of Jim Robb. And now the 91 of 191 of Alkema going a lap down as well. Fairchild's got it strolling, pushing it to the limit, knowing that he is going to have to win this heat to secure that second spot. He didn't win the first two qualifying heats, so with Ashton Rinker winning all three qualifying heats in Group A, he has locked up that top spot on the podium. But the 62 of Fairchild knows throughout that rough race that we're going to have here later on this afternoon, as long as he's within striking distance of the leader, 
he's going to always have a shot. He's got to make sure that he secures that second spot on the start dock so that he has the best ability to control when he can pick and choose to take that shot. You see there the 52, a rinker easily getting by the 191 SJ Asphalt Paving Company, Green Buddha Wellness Center, number 191 at Jake Alkama. Now looking to get by him is going to be our third place bolt. That's the R&R Ready Mix, Mr. Bowie Marine Products, Far West Corrosion Composite Craft of RJ West. Four pins here, 1.1 miles around this course here on the shores of the Saginaw River. Boy, you know, in the 62 of Fairchild, you know, not only is he a surgeon on the water, but he's got great communication with his team. And he does that with racing communications because they're radios for racing. And he's pumping that high octane fuel into the back of that 2.5 liter mercury on the back of that 17 foot long carbon fiber evolution hull using Weldon high performance pumps. Weldon pump remains steadfast in their desire to provide innovative, accurate and durable products for street drag off road and marine. When it comes to pumps, Weldon's got you covered. There's the 93 of West, now the 191 of Alcama trying to fight to get his way back onto the lead lap. We've got five minutes in so far here on these 38 second, 1.1 mile course here on the shores of the Saginaw. So just a couple of minutes remaining here in this final qualifying heat. Look at him dance that Formula One on the top of the water, like an aeroplane on the river. The 62 of Fairchild knows how to push it to the limit, push it to the ragged edge. Because he knows that's what he's going to have to do to take another checkered flag here on the shores of the Saginaw. He won Formula One back in 2010, and he's had a, a, a lot of podium finishes since then, but it's been almost, it's been nine years since his last top spot on the podium here in Bay City. And you can tell the 62 of Fairchild pushing hard to look to grab another Grand Prix win in Bay City, Michigan here for Rock the River 2019 presented by Real Flavors round three of the NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships. All right, we are six and a half minutes in, so we've just got a couple of laps left right now. It's the 62 of Fairchild, followed in second by the 52 of Chris Rinker as he's just coming out of turns one and two now. Still fighting on his back hip is our third place boat, the number 93 of RJ West. And then it coming into turns three and four, now you see that's the number 77 of Mike Quindazzi. Then the number nine of Johnny Fleming. Then the 85 of Mike Mackis. Already a lap down is the seventh, eighth, and ninth. The 47 of the 99 of Travis Yates. The 191 of Alkama. And the 47 of Jim Robb. Fairchild pushing it to the limit. Now looking to get in, get into the backside of the 85 of Mike Mackis and maybe put him a lap down as well as we have just got, we are on the final lap here. So you're going to see the 62 of Fairchild Gonna come down through, turn down the back straightaway. Through turns three and four. As he comes out of turns three and four now, tails it out of the exit turn, down the front straightaway. You're gonna see that white flag come out. Go fast, turn left, just four more times. For our leader, this 62 of Fairchild, looking to do exactly what his counterpart in Group A did. That's go wire to wire even though he started last off the dock. 62 of Fairchild came blasting like a rocket. Used that wide line and that clean water to fly by everybody, leave them all in their dust, and he's gone wire to wire since then. As the 62 of Fairchild now only a half lap left, he's made his way down out of turns one and two. He's on the back straightaway, now swings it into turn three. Goes tight off the buoy in turn four and dances it down the front straightaway, taking the checkered flag and securing the second spot on our starting grid just off the back right hip of our pole position is going to be the number 62 of Fairchild. Finishing second here in qualifying group B heat number two is the 52 of Chris Rinker. Oh, there's the white flag. So we got a, I was a little off there. Apologize, ladies and gentlemen. We're on the white flag now. I jumped the gun one lap early, but now he's on that last lap. He's got it cruising down the back straightaway. Coming in on the Jets pizza, number nine of Johnny Fleming as they go down the back straightaway. 52, 62 of Fairchild takes a face full of water just into turn three. Now goes tight to the inside, having to stay off the inside hip of the nine of Fleming, down the front straightaway, and taking the checkered flag, securing second spot in our main event later on this afternoon, running for Lottery.com and McCullough Racing, out of Paw Paw, Illinois, the number 62 of Chris Fairchild.
Here's a look at the starting lineup and the man that has won the first two races of the year, Ashton Rinker, keeps the momentum going, Tim. He's on pole. He sure is, and you got some other guys nipping at his heels. Rusty Wyatt, though, way back down in seventh place, followed by Johnny Fleming. You see Jeremiah Mayo, Jim Robb in the 47, and Jude Gaspard back in 18th. It's a field of 20 boats with Dustin Terry, normally a strong contender, in 20th. Well, the hurricane kept him from getting up here. He drops the flag and they come rolling off the beach. The 62 of Fairchild doesn't fire. Fairchild for the third time this weekend does not fire in the McCullough Racing. He finally gets it going, but that is a disastrous start for the gentleman out of Paw Paw, Illinois. And that is exactly what golden boy Ashton Rinker wanted to see. 17 minutes plus one lap here. We're going to complete anywhere between 30 and 35 laps on the Saginaw. This 24 of Spencer Love found himself up in second now after the 62 of Fairchild didn't fire, but just like he's done all weekend and all season, the 20 of Ashton Rinker has got it dialed in and screaming down the front straight as he slams the door down in a one. Look at the 52 of Chris Rinker. Wide to the outside, he gets side by side with a 93 of West as they start slugging it out for second. But look at the back of that Kniff designed Formula One hull with that 2.5 liter Mercury just screaming down the Saginaw River. Ashton knows it is absolutely imperative to him for him to run perfect laps here. We've got a wreck. Something's happened out on the race course as we've got a red flag. Everybody stopped. What's going on here down on the Saginaw River? We go down into turn one, and it looks like that's the number eight of Jeremiah. Get out of my way. Mayo looks like he couldn't get out of his own way. Snap rolled it down. Oh, no, that's crystal clear. We've got two boats in the water. We've got the 94 of Rusty Wyatt and the crystal clear wiper blades and the number eight of Jeremiah Mayo. Did they get together down there, or did Mayo somehow bump into the 94 and 94 just lost his rear cowling. Whoa, boy, things get dicey here on the Saginaw and they got dicey early for the young rookie, the 19 year old out of Richmond, Texas, as he lost control of it down there in turn number one. And he, what happened to him has happened to plenty a Formula One driver here in Bay City. 20 seconds, there's the starter flag. He drops it, they take off. and. Fairchild doesn't fire again. Again, the 62 of Fairchild is left on the dock and he's still there. The race might be over before it began for the 62 of Fairchild. And what a great window that is for the 24 of Spencer Love. He says, hey, thanks man, I'll take that again. I'll take that every day. But they all have a very large task on hand because he's got clean water. He slides it out of four and he opens it up wide open on the front straightaway, the 20 of Rinker. And here comes the 94 of Wyatt side by side with the 52 of Fairchild sandwiched on the inside. It's the 94, the 93 of RJ West. We've got five boats within three and a half seconds of each other coming down the shores of the Saginaw River. As the 20 of Ashton Rinker looking to put a stranglehold on the series standings here in 2019 and possibly go to Pittsburgh with an opportunity to lock up the title as he goes down out of turn number three and four. He, we will now have finally completed our first lap and look out, Spencer Love gets way on its tail. And now we've got the two composite boats going side by side. It's West on the inside. It's the 94 of Wyatt on the outside. It's Composite Craft versus Moore. It's US versus France as they go down the front straightaway down into turn number one. The 94 of Wyatt going wide to the outside. Surprising that the 93 of West wants that inside line. He said that, you know, that boat likes to run loose. It's a little heavy. So I'm surprised that he's really pushing that thing as hard as he is on that inside line. But at the end of the day, if Rinker's running wide to the outside and so is Spencer Love, he has to find that clear water. You see there the 93 of West getting, getting it going out into lane number two. Way, way wide out in lane number five is the 94 of Rusty Wyatt and that crystal clear wiper blades Formula One. But they're all trying to catch the golden boy, the number 20 of Ashton Rinker, as he pushes it down the back stretch and continues to push and push and push. And the real question is, is whatever happened to the 62 of Chris Fairchild? You know, he didn't fire off the dock. Who knows where he's at now? He's not in the top 10, but guess who is? The man who flew all the way from New Orleans International Airport this morning, the 03 of Dustin Terry finds himself in the ninth position already here in this 19 boat main event here in the Formula One class. 
but it's all Ashton Rinker out in first. Then it's the 24 of Spencer Love, followed by the 93 of RJ West in third, the 94 of Rusty Wyatt sitting in fourth. Then the other half of the Rinker Racing Team, the 52 of Chris Rinker in fifth. Then it's the 85 of Mike Mackis. Good job, Mr. Mackis, the Oshkosh, Wisconsin native runner for Easy Loader Trailers, having a great race here in sixth position. Then it's the number two of Racing Tracy Hawkins, runner for Bayside Home Care, Tuttle Enterprises, and Real Flavors. Then it's the 15 of Tim Craft in eighth, followed by the Dustin Terry in ninth. And rounding out the top 10 is the number 35 of Mike Clapadlo. Everybody yet holding up on the lead lap. You see down there in the bottom of the course, that's the 191 of Jake Alcama. It's been a long and a rough weekend for the 191 Alcama running both Formula One and Formula Light. Said he took a beating yesterday, especially in the Formula Lights with the wind we had yesterday. The river was especially gnarly here in downtown Bay City. But boy, look at the 93 of West has started to open up. Bit of a gap over the 94 of Wyatt for that final spot on the podium. But where is Chris Fairchild? What happened? to the 62, he didn't fire again. The question is, is was he ever able to get it under power? I don't know, uh, but uh, unfortunate turn of events for that McCullough Racing team that's worked tirelessly all weekend long to find a few extra miles an hour to try to catch this young man we see out in front here, the Rinker Boat World number 20 of Ashton Rinker. Ricky really understands how to push that boat to the limit. There's the 24 of Love, and Spencer better watch out because it looks like the 93 of West is really starting to gain some ground as the West Coast California natives are really slugging it out for second and third position. And our leader, the 20 of Rinker, starting now as he goes side by side with another Kniff Design Formula One. Oh no, the 9098s is out. There's the 62 of Fairchild. I hope he starts moving up the, the grid here but I don't know if that gremlin that caused him not to fire is also causing him not to really have the top speed he had all weekend coming into the main event. You know, at the end of the day, you can qualify great, but if you don't come off the dock, your afternoon could be spoiled in quite a hurry, and that's exactly what happened for the 62 McCullough Racing Lottery.com at Chris Fairchild. Our leader of Rinker already down to the north end of the course, now looking to eye up more of those back markers and strategically place those back markers between himself and the number 24 of Spencer Love. But boy, as this river gets choppier, just like we saw in the Formula Lights panel, you can't really air it out. And the amount of time that you can gain over your competitors in open water shrinks considerably. There's, so you see the 71 occur picking back up some speed, but he's wide to the outside as he's had motor problems all weekend long. First, it was a fuel pump. Then it was the floats uh, in cylinders five and six. And then they found a pinched fuel hose and finally got it dialed in, but it really didn't allow them time to figure out what prop combination they need here in the Formula One class in Bay City to run on the rough and tumble waters of the Saginaw. And that's what it's all about here in Formula One tunnel boat racing. It's all about that setup, what propeller, what engine package? Are you gonna run a little leaner, a little fatter? You want more punch out of the corner? You're looking for more top end speed down the straightaway and we got another wreck on the course. Something's happened out there. I heard the flare go off down there and we've got another stoppage. We can see, yes, that is the 03 of Dustin Terry. Oh no, looks like that boat is very badly damaged. The 03 of Dustin Terry may have blown it over down the back straightaway. He was pushing so hard to make it all the way from last off the dock. It looks like 93 is done. Oh, what an unfortunate turn of events. I just got word from Race HQ that RJ West is done. The 93 of RJ West for the second race in a row has had to drop out early on. We see there's the 24 of Spencer Love and now the 94 of Rusty Wyatt's moved up to third position. They've got the pace boat peels off. They're waiting for the green flag and there they go. This is exactly what the 24 of Love wanted as well as the 94 of Wyatt. They're now all sandwiched together. Look at Love run wide to the outside. We've got them deck to deck side by side here on the Saginaw River. The 20 of Ashton Rinker doing it again, starting to pull away. But boy, we got a drag race for second and third is the 94 of Wyatt on the inside. And then now up and fourth is the 52 of Rinker. And then it's Makis. Then the 35 of Clopadlo, followed by the two of Rinker. Or excuse me, the two of Race and Tracy Hawkins. We got a dogfight out here on the Saginaw River, River, round three of the NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships. 
There's the 62 of Fairchild finally making his way back up into the top 10 there after the horrific spot. And it looks like the 94 got by. The 94 of Rusty Wyatt was able to drag race by the number 24 of Spencer Love and moved his way up into second position. Boy, coming into round number three here in 2019, the 94 of Rusty Wyatt was in third position in the overall season standings. Fairchild's back in 10th. Spencer Love's behind him. As Spencer was sitting in fourth, Will he be able to move up one spot in the series standings and gain enough points to close that gap on the 20 a rinker? Well, the only way that's happening is if the young man out front, the golden boy from Riverview, Florida, running for rinker boat world, has something go wrong. Because right now he is absolutely strolling here on the Saginaw River as he sweeps it down into turns one and two, out of two, back up on its tail. Packing air under that 17 foot long Knip Design Formula One tunnel hull. 105, 110, 150, 120 miles an hour down the straightaways here on the Saginaw River. And it looks like now something might have gone on with the 24 of Spencer Love because he's not really performing at the rate he was before the uh, second restart. And now the 52 of Chris Rinker's nipping on his heels. So for that third position, could we see Rinker, Rinker bookends on the podium? It's going to be tough to tell for now, especially with the 52 of Chris Rinker being a rookie. But it looks like he may have a shot at getting himself on the podium for the first time in his young Formula One career. 94 of Wyatt starting to put some room between himself and the 24 of Spencer Love. So we've got a kind of a, a decent gap, about 10 boat lengths from first to second, an additional 10 from second to third, and then it really starts to create a log jam. With the 52 in fourth, the 85 of Makis in fifth, the six, 30, in sixth place is the 35 of Clapadlo, seventh is the number two of Racing Tracy Hawkins, and then in eighth position, the 15 of Tim Kraft, ahead of the 62 of Chris Fairchild, and making his way up from second to last off the dock. Ninth, started 19th all the way up to 10th, the 71 LaPere, Michigan native, running for Racy's Extreme Motorsports, Jolt Credit Union, and discount signs and awnings, the 71 of Jimmy Kerr. You know, one boat I haven't seen out there at all today, and I don't know if he's still on the race course or if we lost him as well, that's the Tampa Tornado, the number 21 of Jose Mendania Jr. You know, Jose Mendania running for Dean Arbor Ford Nuthouse Yacht Club uh, has had a battle all weekend long in his Formula One boat. Found his spot on the podium in Formula Lights, but hasn't been able to capture that lightning again here in the Formula One class. The 20 of Rinker continuing to push hard. There's the 62 of Fairchild. He's driving it like he stole it, trying to make up as many positions. All, all, up to eighth now, was able to get by the 15 of Tim Kraft because uh, he knows he's got to make up points. His teammate couldn't be here for qualifying due to a hurricane down in Louisiana. He then blew it over on lap seven. And now the 62 of Fairchild is up into seventh position. And it looks like the number two of Race and Tracy Hawkins is out. Something happened to the real flavors. Bayside Home Care, number two of Tracy Hawkins. He's dead in the water out there, or has had to pull it onto the ramp. That means the Fairchild moves up to seventh. The 35 of Clopadlo is now up into sixth position. And that's a great run for the 35 of Mike Clopadlo. Uh, limited schedule here in 2019, but boy, he loves the rough and tumble waters of the Saginaw. And that shows here, and what a great move up into sixth position. But it is still all Ashton Rinker. The man who's led wire to wire so far through two restarts. And he's trying to hold off the 94 of Rusty Wyatt, the young man from Innisfil, Ontario, Canada, who sits in second. Will he have an answer for our leader? We're going to have to wait and find out as he's still about 10 boat lengths behind the 20 of Rinker. Boy, Rinker just, it seems like nothing phases the Rinker Boat World Racing Team. Restarts damaged boats, doesn't matter. I remember two weeks ago, the man sitting in fourth position broke that boat in half. 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the last two weeks, all hands have been on deck in the Rinker Racing Team. And there's the two of Race and Tracy Hawkins down there on the northwest side of the course, dead in the water. And it looks like, did his motor break off completely? Yes. How does that happen? I have never seen that in Formula One tunnel boat racing. The midsection and motor of the two of Race and Tracy Hawkins has completely dislodged from 
his Fort Lawn tunnel boat. Let's hope it's not sinking to the bottom of the Saginaw River as we speak, because that's about $15,000 worth of equipment that may not be able to be recouped at this deep river here just south of Lake Erie. But it continues for the two of race at Tracy Hawkins, as well as it's gone for Ashton Rinker in 2019. It's diametrically opposed to that is the year that the two of race and Tracy Hawkins has had. Unfortunate. Here comes Fairchild. He's now up into sixth. He got by the 35 of the Clopadlo. And boy, those restarts were just what the doctor ordered for the lottery.com. McCullough Racing 62 of Chris Fairchild as he is screaming his way up to the podium. He's trying to get there. I don't know if he's going to have enough time here in this Formula One final to find his way on the podium, but he's sure gonna give it everything he has. He's gonna ride it on the ragged edge and he's gonna push it. As a surgeon on the water, he knows exactly where that line is. He's a past champion here in Bay City, he won in 2010, and now he just got by the 85 of Mike Mackis, and now he's up in the fifth position. Now he's got his eyes set on the number 52 of Chris Rinker. This is, boy, what a great run it's been so far outside of him not firing on the opening start as well as the restart. Uh, but 62 of Fairchild really running well here now that he's got that motor grooving. The 77 of Mike Quindazzi in eighth position is now looking to get lapped by our leader, the 20 of Ashton Rinker. Rinker continuing to push that Kniff Design Formula One hull on the ragged edge to the limit down the front straightaway. Sweeping it beautifully through turns one and two. Boy, he is just in the zone here in 2019. Nothing faces him. Restarts, broken boats. The team having to put all their focus on his teammates just so they can get ready for this race. He comes in and he does exactly where he, he picks up exactly where he left off in round two which is running the thing all over the course and leaving everybody in his dust as he goes wide on a turn number four, putting it on its tail, dancing down the front straightaway. Getting, starting to get real rough there, out there on the Saginaw, even the 20 of Rinker up and down, being slammed by the waves created here with seawalls on either side of this river on this 1.1 mile, four pin Formula One course here at round three of the NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships at Rock in the River 2019 here in Bay City, Michigan, presented by Real Flavors. NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships brought to you by NGK Spark Plugs, the ignition specialists. They are the largest original equipment supplier and manufacturer of spark plugs with coverage in 85% of outboard motors and 100% of personal watercrafts. And they always want to remind you, regular maintenance prevents plug fouling and provides optimal performance. For reliable performance on the water, trust the brand that OEMs ask for by name, NGK. Well, the NGK spark plugs, all six of them on the back of that Formula One hull with number 20 on the side are firing exactly the way he wants them as he's just screaming down the back stretch, continuing to just keep calm. James Chambers, crew chief, is on the radio telling him, hey, you got room. Do not push it on the other side of that line. There is nobody out there that's going to be able to catch you. Conversely, the 94 of Rusty Wyatt, his crew chief Ted Gregouche is telling him, son, it's going to get rougher. There's going to be back markers. You just need to close that gap so that in the event that Rinker makes a mistake in the corner, you're there to pounce on him, just like he did in qualifying heat number two when he was able to get by the two of race and Tracy Hawkins and win by just a nose in that second qualifying heat, which gave him a lot of critical points. So we've got the 62 of Fairchild in fifth. In sixth position, it's the 85 of Makis. And in seven, it's the 35 of Mike Lepadlo. But they're all trying to chase the man who's trying to hold that top spot. Lee gets a little squirrely there down the front straightaway. This is what happens to Saginaw. The more we, deeper we get into the race, the more this river shows her teeth and gets super rough out here. And even our leader got a little squirrely and that could have spelled disaster, but he was able to ride it, get it back down onto the water and continues to push forward out in front. The 94 of Wyatt, a little bit of a gap, but he's trying to do everything he can to close it down as quickly as possible. And still holding onto that third spot is the 24 of Spencer Love. Nice job for the gentleman out of Santa Rosa Valley, California, running for Clover Construction. But you can see there's our lead right now. It's about two and a half seconds, three seconds between our leader, the 20 of Ashton Rinker, and the crystal clear wiper. It's number 94 of Rusty Wyatt. 
Rusty destroyed a motor earlier this weekend. He's got a brand new motor on that boat. They were very worried that they hadn't had enough break-in time. They might want to not worry about having to second-guess themselves anymore because that motor is real good, and that boat is screaming fast here on the Saginaw River. There's the 47 of Jim Robb, and I don't know what happened to the 47 Hill. Oh, unfortunately, the man out of Grand Blanc, Michigan, running for Buffalo Wild Wings has started to pull to the outside course markers there on the north end of the course, and it looks like the Saginaw may have claimed another. That's five boats down here on the Saginaw River that have been swallowed up by this brutally tough body of water just a few miles south of the mouth of Lake Erie, and that's what happens. Lake Erie has so much water, and when that wind comes, it just pushes that water back down river and creates a double current. So you got the current from the river flowing into Lake Erie, and then all that momentum of all that water being pushed back out of Lake Erie because of how big it is when the wind's out of the north, it creates two currents, and geez, he's getting squirrely. That front stretch is getting real nasty, and there's the white flag. Go fast, turn left just four more times for the young man out of Riverview, Florida. Can he continue to hold on to that and go back to back to back and be the only man who's won a race here in 2019? If the 94 of Wyatt has anything to say about it, it's not going to happen. He's pushing hard, pushing it to the limit, but that limit is about to be over because we've only got a couple turns left for our leader, the man who's looking to win his third title in 2019 and surpass his total wins for all of 2018 and where he won the series championship. He pushes it out of turn three, puts it on its tail, and wherever you are throughout the world, let me hear you put your hands together. The round three champion here at Rockin' the River 2019 in Bay City is none other than Riverview, Florida's natives running for Rinker Boat World, number 20, Mr. Ashton Rinker. So confirmation of the result, Ashton Rinker with 150 points, Rusty White second, Spencer Love in third, Chris Rinker in fourth, and Chris Fairchild fifth.